Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about NAC, or N-acetylcysteine. It is a very potent antioxidant as well as an anti-inflammatory. So we're going to discuss some of the foods, the benefits of taking it, what can it affect, and some of the dosages that you can take to benefit from taking NAC. So the food sources are onions and garlic. NAC will go and convert to L-cysteine and with some sulfur containing foods, it will convert in the liver and make glutathione. Now glutathione is a very important antioxidant, right? It's one of the most potent ones that our body can produce. So the benefits are that it helps the detoxification pathways, right? Improves insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance or diabetes, right? So it helps blood sugar management. Also, it's an anti-inflammatory. It affects cytokines. So things like tumor necrosis factor, interleukins or NF-kappa B, it helps balance your immune system, right? So oftentimes we give patients glutathione for people who have autoimmune processes to help calm the inflammatory process and help calm the immune system. The other one we talked about was PCOS and that relates to the insulin sensitivity, right? Brain, it affects dopamine centers as well as excitatory centers uh, for glutamate, right? Dopamine is basically the pleasure uh, neurotransmitter. So if you can affect dopamine, it will help with addiction, bipolar disease, depression, OCD, as well as anxiety. And there are quite a number of studies on this, how NAC can benefit patients who have OCD and the anxiety level that comes with it. Glutamate. The benefits of glutamate for some patients is that it will prevent or slow down Alzheimer's as well as Parkinson's disease over here, okay? Another thing is it helps to thin out mucus in the lungs. So if you have pneumonia or if you have um, um, pulmonary obstructive disease, right? It can help thin the mucus and help uh, the breathing aspect of these diseases. As a matter of fact, in the uh, 1963, it was classified as a drug and they used it uh, for lung disease, right? And they still use it for acetaminophen overdose or Tylenol overdose because uh, it can significantly impact the liver. So they use NAC as a drug, basically. Now, recently, they've um, had issues with the FDA and Amazon basically removed all NAC products off their site. However, it is still commercially available and can be bought through uh, nutrition stores and nutrition shops, okay? So, about dosages. When we look at NAC, you can take anywhere between 600 to 1800 milligrams a day in divided doses. It's best taken on an empty stomach However, if you get things like nausea or loose stool, then you might want to take it after your meal. Okay? Things that will enhance NAC is things like selenium, cordyceps, and go to cola. So with these combined nutrients with NAC, you can basically help to recycle glutathione and improve your antioxidant levels and improve uh, overall health. Right because when you have a lot of oxidation and stress to our body, what happens is tissues break down. Every cell in your body will take an oxi oxidative blow, and glutathione is what that protective shield is. It helps you protect against oxidation as well as the inflammatory process. So NSC is a very important nutrient for a lot of different patients. So with respect to, let's say, COVID, and you have lung issues or breathing issues or mucus in your lungs, NAC can be of benefit for those patients um, who have a lot of lung and mucus uh, built up within the, within the uh, lung structures, right? Um, obviously, they use things like prone uh, positioning to help release some of the mucus, but as well as NAC being utilized, 
it would be the added benefit, okay? Today we're going to talk about NAC or N-acetylcysteine. Last week's video generated a lot of questions about how glutathione will work and what is the mechanisms and what are some of the supplements you can take to improve glutathione levels. So let's go into it. So the main purpose of taking NAC or N-acetylcysteine is to improve glutathione levels. Glutathione is a tripeptide, so it's made up of three amino acids, glycine, L-glutamic acid, and L-cysteine, right? So NAC or N-acetylcysteine will convert to L-cysteine and help convert into glutathione. So one of the most important thing is that you have to understand is it's one of the most potent antioxidants that our body can produce, right? So it reduces the effects of what we call reactive oxygen species, right? So reactive oxygen species, ROS. What that means is that our body is under constant stress, right? Oxidative stress. So what happens with reactive oxygen species, right? It's produced in the mitochondria, right? And if it's produced, it starts to damage some of the structures as well as the pathways, right, in order to produce energy. And that damage will cause inflammation, and inflammation in turn will produce more reactive oxygen species. So this kind of a vicious cycle that can occur when we have oxygen, uh, reactive oxygen species. So glutathione is a very important uh, antioxidant to help recycle some of the glutathione as well as improving or reducing the oxidative effects, okay? So what we know, oral administration of glutathione, GSH, right? It does not adequately restore glutathione, right? If you take orally glutathione, it doesn't restore glutathione to an adequate level. It rapidly breaks down uh, in our body by the liver and the intestines. Right? So the glutathione is broken down before it can be ever utilized if you take it orally. It does not cross the cell membrane. So glutathione needs to be kind of taken apart, go into the cell and, and rebuilt. So it, it will not cross uh, as a whole structure. And also, in some studies, glutathione, the half-life of it is only about 90 minutes. So it's short-lived. So the question is, how do we improve that, right? You also have to know that glutathione will decrease as we age. So the older you get, the glutathione stores will go down, uh, creating more reactive oxygen species, more inflammation, and basically aging, right? So let's go ahead and look at some of the um, supplements that we can take. But before we even do supplements, what kind of foods can we eat, right, to help improve glutathione levels? So you want to increase sulfur-containing foods, right? Onion, garlic, broccoli, kale. Now I know whey protein can also improve uh, glutathione levels in certain wheats. However, uh, for most patients that we treat in our office, they have some sort of autoimmune condition. So whey protein or milk protein and, and wheat is really a no-no in our office. So, uh, if you want to go after sulfur-containing foods, I would suggest going with these, okay? It's very important to uh, improve sulfur-containing uh, foods. The other one is exercise. Exercise in itself will improve glutathione levels, right? And thirdly is coffee enemas. Now, coffee enemas are known to help with cancer treatments, right? The Gerson therapy and so forth. However, does it improve glutathione levels? Now that's questionable, right? There are some studies they say that, you know, taking oral caffeine as well as coffee enemas really don't improve glutathione levels. However, coffee does have a lot of antioxidants, so there are some benefits of drinking coffee. However, in terms of actually improving glutathione levels, it's questionable, right? So uh, you can give it a try, but uh, there are other ways that you can improve glutathione levels at this point, right? One of the supplements that you can take is S-acetyl-L-glutathione, right? Basically what they did was they attached an acetyl group to the glutathione, and then it helps to protect the glutathione as it passes through the gut uh, or the stomach, um, 
and it also helps improve cell um, membrane uh, transmission or, or transport. So an acetyl group attached to the glutathione will help uh, preserve the glutathione and get it to the cells that need it. Another way is to do liposomal glutathione. And the way they do that is they bind glutathione to phospholipids. So if you add it to a phospholipid, it can kind of protect the glutathione so it can get absorbed in the gut as well as through the cell membrane, right? So it has that effect. So you can do S-acetyl glutathione and a liposomal glutathione, okay? Now, there are other precursors that you can take to help enhance what we call recycling of the glutathione. Because glutathione is produced in our body, but if you have some raw materials that help build glutathione or recycle glutathione, it can be quite beneficial and uh, quite powerful in terms of health benefits. So some of the precursors are what we call regenerators, right? Re recycling uh, glutathione is selenium, okay? and then alpha-lipoic acid, and NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, cordyceps extracts, go to cola extracts, milk thistle extracts, and L-glutamine. So if you took this on, let's say, an empty stomach, and you followed it with, let's say, an omega-3 or an EPA, DHA fish oil, you can enhance the absorption of glutathione into our system having a more profound effect. Now, there are many companies that make, you know, uh, combination packets of this, right? I'll list some of the supplements that we use in our office below in the description. So you want to go ahead and read through that. But there are a um, couple of different delivery methods that we use. One is the um, oral glutathione, where we do S-acetyl-L-glutathione and liposomal glutathione. But we will also use uh, a combination of these to enhance the recycling uh, properties. So you can take two different uh, types of glutathione uh, support. A third way that um, we can also improve glutathione is uh, through transdermal um, transmission. So if you took a cream that has glutathione in it and some cofactors and you apply it to the specific area that you want to treat. So let's say we have someone who's got Hashimoto's thyroiditis, or inflammation of the thyroid. You can take a glutathione cream and apply it to the neck, and that will help reduce the inflammatory process as well as um, reduce uh, maybe TPO and TG antibodies in our body. So it's very important to do uh, combination therapies for some patients, or some people will be on a maintenance dose, and all they need is some recycling nutrients like this, right? But in our patient population where they come in pretty sick, we may load them up on glutathione in three different ways to help improve that. So it's very important to understand the mechanisms and understand how we can take it to improve glutathione levels in our body, all right? Today we're gonna to talk about the different delivery methods for NAC or N-acetylcysteine and glutathione. Before I get started on the delivery methods, let's just recap what NAC is and what glutathione is and the benefits and so forth. I've made videos on this topic before, so I'll go ahead and link uh, the video below uh, so you can watch those videos and get a little bit more in-depth view of what NAC and glutathione is. So let's get right into it. NAC delivery method, okay? Food sources first. So NAC or uh, and acetylcysteine you can get from cruciferous vegetables, garlic, onions, meat, fish, chicken, turkey, eggs, and whey protein. Basically, it's uh, prevalent in animal products and garlic and onions and cruciferous vegetables. <clears throat> Exercise also will increase glutathione and because glutathione is so important for reducing what we call ROS or reactive oxygen species. Benefits of NAC and glutathione improves detox, improves insulin resistance, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Important for brain because it helps dopamine and glutamate. It's important for things like addiction problems, bipolar, OCD, obsessive uh, compulsive disorders, depression and anxiety. 
also it's very important for anti-inflammatory effects. So it dampens infl uh, inflammation by impacting some of the cytokines. Helps to thin out the mucus of the lungs. So if you have lung infection or, or cough, uh, it can help definitely clear out some of that in the lungs. Now, in 1963, uh, glutathione or NAC was classified as a drug, okay? And they used it for lung problems, right? Uh, chronic lung issues. And they also used it for acetaminophen um, overdose. Uh, they still use it to this day. Now, enhancers and regenerators of glutathione. Things that enhance uh, glutathione production are things like selenium, alpha-lipoic acid, uh, NAC or NAC, cordyceps, gotocula, and milk thistle. You can use also L-glutamine and some uh, fish oil uh, to help enhance uh, absorption and recycling. What we say enhancers and regenerators, glutathione is produced in the liver and it can be recycled and improved uh, for reuse. So basically, glutathione is the most important antioxidant or most powerful antioxidant in our body. It takes the blow, the oxidative stress. NAC is the precursor to glutathione. Again, I'll, I'll link those videos below so you can watch those and get a better understanding of what NAC does and what glutathione does, okay? So let's get into delivery methods. NAC and glutathione. First of all, there's oral delivery methods. You can use, I use a product called Glutathione Recycler. So here's the product, okay? I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's called Glutathione Recycler. It's made by Apex Energetics. Now, I, don't, I am not uh, sponsored or I don't get any funding or anything from these nutritional companies. I find that if I get funded by nutritional companies, uh, my opinion might skew as to what might be best for my patients. So, uh, it's just a product that I use. Uh, I really like it. Uh, it's called Glutathione Recycler from Apex Energetics. This has all the precursors for glutathione. So all the things that we talked about, things like the cordyceps, gotocola, uh, milk thistle, NAC, uh, it's all in this one little product. It was formulated by Dr. Karazian or Dr. K. Uh, some of you who watch my videos might know of him. He's very big into the functional medicine uh, teaching world. Uh, he's an excellent uh, clinician as well. And he formulated this, okay? So this is one we can use um, as a precursor. For NAC uh, or NAC, you wanna use between 600 and 1800 milligrams per day in divided doses on an empty stomach is usually best. Uh, however, if you miss your dosage, go ahead and take it after the meal. It's better to take it than not take it at all. So there are ideal times to take supplements, but not everyone can do those times. So if you miss it, and if you can't do it on an empty stomach, just go ahead and take it after the meal, okay? So that's one oral uh, delivery method. The other oral delivery method is, I use a product called Tumero Active, and this also has, um, the L-glutathione, it has um, acetylglutathione. So it has, the, the trisomal has this. It has NAC, which is the precursor for producing glutathione. It has liposomal glutathione and S-acetyl-L-glutathione, all in one. So it's a great delivery method. Because um, glutathione breaks down very easily in the gut, the idea is to use different forms of it to bypass the gut and get it absorbed better in the GI tract. Uh, so that's why they came up with these formulations where they use liposomal and an acetylated version of it. So these are the two products I would use in my office um, that helps with glutathione and glutathione recycling, okay? Now, number one, number two is called transdermal. Uh, we use a product, it's a cream called OxyCell. Um, and what you do is, with this cream, you can apply it to the skin. And it has a great local anti-inflammatory effect as well as uh, antioxidant effects. So you'll apply like a small amount of this cream. 
So let's say you have a thyroid issue. You have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an inflammatory process of the thyroid or an autoimmune process. You can apply a little bit of that uh, glutathione cream right into the area that you want to infect, uh, affect and uh, dampen the inflammation in that local area. So transdermally, you can use it in soft areas, any vascular areas or, or areas that you want to target. So we have a product called OxyCell. You can also use a suppository for glutathione. So this is a product that we can use. It's called Xenoplex. And this, this is a suppository. And in that suppository, it has organic coffee extract and glutathione. So after re, uh, having a, a normal bowel movement or evacuating your bowels, you can do a suppository to help uh, boost glutathione and bypassing the gut. Okay, so that's another delivery method. The final delivery method is nebulizing glutathione. I use a product called L-Glutathione Plus, right there. And it's from a company called Thera Naturals. And I'll link the, link the product below for you. Okay, and what you do is you open up one of the capsules. So you take a glutathione capsule like this, like this product right here and you get a nebulizer. And this is just the apparatus I would use uh, for the nebulizing portion of it. So you open up a capsule, and let's say you drop it in here, you open the capsule, throw it in there, right? You can use a little bit of saline solution that you can use for like nasal rinses, uh, or you can use distilled water, and you put a little bit in here, and you close it up. You'll use a little uh, nebulizing machine that you attach to the bottom of this, and you take it and you breathe it in. Now there are different ways to do this with different machines out there. You can use kind of something to mystify or mist uh, the, the product and you basically can gently breathe it in, right? If you have a lot of sinus problems, you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. If you have lung problems, you want to breathe in deeply and get it into the lungs a bit. So you can use glutathione to help in multiple ways. You has multiple delivery methods that you can utilize. And when you are sick, you can use probably all of the delivery methods to really boost your glutathione levels and to um, recover from um, health issues. So uh, those are great different methods. I'll go ahead and link the products below also. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, some of the products are prescription only from a physician, so you have to find the physician who's willing to prescribe it for you. Um, but I'll try to link equivalent products there for you um, in the link below. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.